Hello! Just dropping by to let you all know about this new pricing model that is coming to Microsoft Purview. So you need to be aware of this uh, if, in case you don't want to lose your data catalog features. Essentially, you are going to get this pop-up icon right here. Uh, if you log into Microsoft Purview, they're going to tell you that there is a new uh, business and pricing model going on and coming to you. It's a pay-as-you-go pricing model, and it's going to change how we pay for the data governance features and also the data security capabilities. I haven't focused that much on data security yet. So in this video, I'm going to focus on data governance uh, as well and how this is going to affect you. But just keep in mind that your uh, purview admin or uh, global admin needs to approve and consent to this. Uh, if they don't do that, you're going to lose your uh, data catalog features, and we don't want to lose them, right? So be aware. Now, what does this mean in practice? Well, previously, you've been paying for your data map, and your data map is the place where you're scanning all your data and where you have your physical data assets, right? You're scanning all your applications and solutions, and you have your physical assets. That's what's been costing you money and from purview previously. So there are two cost drivers you need to pay attention to in this new pay-as-you-go model. One of them is the data catalog features. Instead of paying for the consume of scanning the assets, you're now going to pay for the number of governed data assets. And what is the, the governed data asset, you ask? Let me tell you. So a governed data asset is all the assets that you are connecting towards uh, a data product. So now if I go into purview and then we can check out this here and I open one of my data uh, products, you see that I've connected these physical data as assets towards my data product. Now, if we look at all these assets, you can see that I have 13 data assets connected to my data product here. That means that I'm going to pay uh, for 13 data assets for all the days <laughs> that uh, I have them connected to my data product throughout one month. So if I have 13 data assets connected to a data product for 30 days, I'm going to pay, pay for that amount, right? So that means that you can uh, reduce this, add on as you go, as you need to be able to create your perfect data products. The second cost driver is going to be on the data management side. So that's going to be if you run quality and health management actions and so on, that's going to uh, consume data governance processing units. Um, on these pay-as-you-go meters, and then that's gonna uh, gonna be what's driving the cost. So one side you have the actual number of governed data assets that you want to connect to a data product. The other driver will be on the data management side uh, and on the number of data quality rules, for instance, that you're running, uh, and what's the cons uh, consumption of running those uh, those rules. Now, is this a good idea? Are we happy about this? Great question. Uh, so I think um, one thing that is really nice about this new way of paying for this is that, of course, I think Purview should be your marketplace, your go-to place for understanding your entire data ecosystem, right? That's what Purview should be. That means that you should actually scan all your data uh, solutions, all your data platforms, all your data applications, and that can very quickly become very expensive. Now, moving towards this uh, paying for your governed assets instead of just all the assets when you're scanning them means that we're moving towards a more governance focused way uh, of thinking because now governance is actually driving the cost, which I think is a good thing. So now we actually have to care about what type of assets and what physical assets we are connecting towards our data products. And we can't just say, oh, you know what, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna connect everything. And coming from Fabric specifically, I've seen this be a bit of a challenge. So when you're inside Fabric, there is a bit of a question. Uh, what is the data product? Is it the data lake? Is it the Power BI report? Is it the Power BI semantic model? Uh, is it all of the above? What do we actually want to govern? Who should own the specific assets? Why do we want to govern these? And are these really part of the product? So it's uh, driving those discussions uh, and sort of forcing those discussions to happen now, which I think is a good thing. Uh, but it will be interesting to see how this develops and how, uh, like, what we think from the data community about this change moving forward. Okay, so there's still some um, 
missing bits and pieces about this, right? So can you set up some alerts? Yes, you can actually do that when it comes to cost. Uh, but what about splitting cost? Can I can I split it so that uh, this part of the organizations pay for what they are governing and this other part pays for what they are governing and so on? Uh, and or can I have a report showing me the cost model or how this is going? And the answer today is no, but things are on the way. Things are going to change. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to come with a lot of feedback on what we need Microsoft to develop and focus on for this to become uh, a success and something we can enjoy. So I'm curious to know what you think, think about, about this new pricing model. So please let me know in the comments below. And I will also link uh, the articles that I have found useful to better understand this new pricing model somewhere below uh, in this video. And uh, please let me know what you think. And I will see you later for the next video. Bye.